Well, recently, I finally went to the optometrist. I had kept putting it off because much to my surprise, the one I usually saw wasn't available and his replacement was on maternity leave. Therefore, I had to find a new one and I just hadn't gotten around to it. Fortunately, I found one that was very close by and I was easily able to make an appointment. I even got there on time. I um, had my exams done and ordered my new contacts. Why is this a big deal? Because I'm vain. There, I said it. I don't like how I look with glasses. Why do I mention this sin of vanity? Because I want you to think of it as the opposite of what Paul, Silas, Jason, and other new believers were about. You see, by the time we arrive to this chapter in the book of Acts, we have come to a time when Paul's popularity has changed. He's no longer revered for his healings and teachings. Instead, we're told that the Jewish leaders are jealous of him. Why? Because he has continued to teach about Jesus, but more importantly, because he's curing people. Others, too, are upset about Paul because he had cured a young woman of an evil spirit of divination, we're told, and now her owners are upset that they can no longer use her to give psychic readings and therefore they can no longer use her for their own greedy purposes. Now at this point in the book of Acts, Paul has arrived to the city of Thessalonica. You might recall the city of Thessalonica because in our New Testament, we have letters that Paul wrote to that church, and it's called the first and second books or letters of Thessalonians. Well, it was his custom, we're told, when he arrived to a new city, that he would begin to teach for three days straight in the synagogue about why Jesus had to come and die. Now, if you think about the timing, Jesus has come, he has lived, he has died, he has risen. Uh, the new church is, uh, the, the new Christian church is a baby church. And Paul is uh, now convincing both Jewish and Gentiles why they should believe in this person as Jesus, as the Messiah. Now the Jewish leaders are so upset at Paul and his helper Silas that they hire men to form a riot in town and to hunt them down. They think they will find them in a home that belonged to someone called Jason. Well, they don't find him there. And like I told the young people earlier, instead they go ahead and they arrest Jason and beat him up and, and throw charges against him. But the Roman authorities uh, agree to let him go. Notice that Paul, Silas, Jason, and other followers at this point in their popularity could have made a ministry all about them. Notice too that they could have just hidden in fear of the Jews and the Roman authorities, but they didn't. Instead, Paul is focused on his call, which is to teach the good, new, radical teachings about Jesus mostly of inclusivity. Silas, Jason, and a group of women too are focused on helping Paul carry out his ministry of teaching. Now why and how were Paul and his helpers able to remain focused? Well, we learn what enabled them to carry out this important ministry of teaching and healing when we read a part of Paul's letter to the church of Thessalonica. And it's found in our Bible in the first letter to Thessalonians, verses 1 through 10. And I'm only going to read part of it. But if you can imagine now, we are reading Paul's interpretation of what Rick just read for us. So first he's greeting them and he says, Paul Silvanus and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. 
He goes on, we always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers constantly, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the, of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And then he goes on to say, And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. And for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy from the Holy Spirit so that you became an example to all believers. In other words, Paul is saying that it is because of the power of the Holy Spirit that they all, he, his helpers, and now this church of Thessalonia, Thessalonica are able to do and carry out this important ministry. Not only this, but he also encourages this early church because despite their persecution as well, they have been uh, receiving as a new church, they've remained steadfast, courageous, and loyal. Unlike us who can believe in whatever we want to, they couldn't. Speaking about a new Messiah, welcoming both Jews and Gentiles in the same crowd, performing healing miracles would have all been suspect, if not considered blasphemous to the Jewish authorities, and a threat to the Roman Empire. But again, they did not make this new faith in Christ about themselves, but rather they kept their focus on who Jesus was and why Jesus had come to live and die and be raised from the dead. Now, while we are not at risk for worshiping Jesus here in this country, and we're not at risk of any danger for carrying out ministries of service for and with others, we face another danger. That danger is twofold. Firstly, that we forget what and who we are about. Secondly, that we do not rely on the power of the Holy Spirit to speak the truth in love. As the world celebrates Earth Day tomorrow, and we do here in Santa Barbara next weekend, it's an opportune time to remind one another of the importance of speaking the truth in love about how important it is to care for God's creation, for God's nature and all of God's children as well. While a certain fraction of Christianity attempts to hijack our faith, we cannot allow those, those voices that usually deny any climate change uh, and also um, espouse hate against others. They also want to control bodies, usually the bodies of women. They often promote the gap that exists between rich and poor and have no problem showing bigotry and discrimination against people of color, immigrants, and LGBTQIA siblings. Instead, the good news which we are reminded of from Paul's letter today is that we do not stand on our own power, but on the power of the Holy Spirit, which is with us and the church today. Let us not forget that it was Jesus himself that promised to send the Holy Spirit to the disciples right before he left them. And because Jesus is and was a person that came through on his promises, indeed, we see how on the day of Pentecost, the the Holy Spirit comes and resides over the disciples and those gathered in the temple. It says also in the Gospel of John, that is when Jesus promised the Holy Spirit. And he says, I'm going to send you a comforter, an advocate, and therefore you will not be left orphaned. So let's remember, friends, that when we speak the truth and love, even and especially when it's hard to do that, even and especially when it's not popular, we don't do it on our own. 
we do it through and with the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, in a few weeks, we will be celebrating Pentecost, which I said is indeed when the Holy Spirit came upon those first disciples. Our story today comes after that first Pentecost. We are not only benefactors of the disciples' ministry, but we've also been entrusted with it as well. As the world changes dramatically around us, as the abuse of power seems to be the norm, as being progressive Christians seems harder and harder now, more than ever, we must rely on the Holy Spirit's presence and power to be with us, to do works of justice, to speak on behalf of the marginalized, to share with one another love and encouragement in difficult times of serving the wider community, and yes, to speak the truth in love. We must not tire friends of doing so, and may we always remember that we belong to God. It is God's power through the person of the Holy Spirit that enables us to carry out those good works. It's not about our false sense of power or popularity, but rather our love for God's creation, God's world, and God's children. May God enable us, encourage us, bless us to continue to do God's good work. Amen.